Hey guys, even here, and yeah, Luke Sando is doing Tampa. That's right, very exciting news, and I'm happy for him very, very much. Actually, I'm not really happy for him, I'm happy for myself, so, because I'm gonna make a good story out of this, and I'm gonna watch a hell of a show. So, Tampa Pro, coming up in two and a half weeks, of course, guys, don't worry, I will cover it completely, don't worry about that. It is uh, gonna be exciting, because we're gonna have Dexter Jackson, who is the favorite to win it. Possibly, possibly, but not very likely we're gonna see Big Ramy. But I don't think Big Ramy is really the question now. The question is gonna be Luke. Is Luke gonna be good enough to beat Dexter? And this is a big question. So basically he made this post, he says, Cat is out of the proverbial bag, I'm doing Tampa, two and a half weeks. Now the question is not who's a better bodybuilder. The question is who's gonna bring better package. By the way, yeah, this is Luke doing 200 pound dumbbells and he is dieting right now so this makes him probably the strongest IFBB pro bodybuilder if we consider the top guys the top 20 guys he is the strongest one he is barbell rowing five plates he's bench pressing 200 pound dumbbells easily but when the competition comes that won't really matter what matters is who is the better man who is the better looking bodybuilder and as you can see right here Luke's problem is not his size most certainly, he is thick as a brick, and he is thick, why? Because he lifts some heavy ass weights. So the question is, is he gonna come conditioned? And that is a big question. We saw what kind of damage can he make when he is in shape. We saw that at this Arnold Classic 2019, with his newly added size and with perfect conditioning, brought to you by Chris Asito, he takes third place at the second largest bodybuilding competition in the world leaving only Brandon Curry and William Bonnack ahead of him, beating Rolly Winkler, who is last year's third place finisher at the Mr. Olympia, and guys like Cedric McMillan, Steve Kuklo, Josh Lenartovic, Kim Williams, and many other great bodybuilders. So if Luke comes conditioned, you know, shredded, not super freaking peeled, like a lightweight competitor, no, that's not even the question. These guys are too big to be that conditioned. He can come like he was at the Arnold, if he comes like that, he's gonna have great chances to win the Tampa. But that leaves us with the question, how will Dexter come? I would say that if Dexter brings something like 2017, I'm not gonna say 2015, that's too much, that's too good. He cannot come like he was in 2015, when he took second place at the Mr. Olympia. If he comes something like 2017, he may be 30 pounds smaller than Luke. Dexter is super genetically blessed. He has all the muscles on the perfect places and that's what makes a great bodybuilder. Dexter is one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, seriously. He won 28 pro shows, he has been around for a very long, long time and he knows his business, he has experience, he knows what he's doing and if the father time didn't take toll on his body, finally, and if he comes a little bit better than last year, for example, his 2017 shape can beat Luke Sando. That's what I think. Dexter is just super gifted. His shape is phenomenal. Small, small joints, small waist, everything to make him seem freakier than he really is, and he is freaky on top of that. But I also think that Luke is a great bodybuilder, very complete. That's the thing about him, he's super complete. And he does have the potential to be the next Mr. Olympia. And that's what I really think. I think in a few years he will be the next Mr. Olympia. Because of what? Because of the completeness. That's what it takes to be Mr. Olympia. Completeness. Having everything, having great back, having great legs, and having great arms, having conditioning, having chest, and everything, everything. Luke has all of that. So in the future, I think he's gonna become the Mr. Olympia in a couple of years if everything goes well for him. But right now, he is not out of the oven, just like Lee Marco would say, yeah, I know. I took that phrase from him and probably the style of making videos. I took a little bit from everybody, from Nick, from Louis. I've been watching them for years, so I need to learn from somebody, but I'm giving my personal touch on top of that also. I think I'm making something original. Anyways, enough about me. I think that Luke has very good chances to win the Tampa, but it will depend on what kind of conditioning he brings and what kind of shape Dexter brings. But we'll see, it's gonna be very, very exciting and I'm looking forward to it very, very much. But I have another thing I wanted to talk about and that's Phil Heath. Yeah, again, Phil Heath. Nothing special here, really, not a story. Just another photo of him which looks freaking crazy. 
freaking impressive look at that arm <laughs> look at that arm people are saying some some people are saying that he's downsizing but he is not i mean what the hell are you talking about you cannot see his legs true but they don't look small to me but if you look at those arms <laughs> man oh man take a look at those forearms the biceps even chest and shoulders triceps straps fuck man this is crazy this is freaking impressive and I'm really, really hoping that he is seriously considering coming back in 2019 because if he does, if he does, I think he has very big chances to take his title back. Very big chances because he's going to be fresh, he's going to be motivated properly since he lost the title and uh, it's going to be about his stomach pretty much, he can he control it or not. If he lets it loose like he did last year, no amount of muscle, no level of conditioning would help him win again. No way. That stomach was just horrible. But if he just learns how to control it a little bit better and comes like he was usually, but I think if he comes, he's gonna come better this year. He can take that throne so easily. And I'm sure it's not that difficult to learn how to control your stomach. He had a whole year to practice it. And he knows that. I'm sure he's not stupid. I'm sure he is aware of his problem. He's saying that he's not, but I'm pretty sure that he is and uh, he's gonna be the best on that stage if he learns how to control that gut. Anyways, I have another story. So this is actually a story. It's about Henry Pierano and you can see him first on this list. He is competing in the open division, just like Hadi Chopin. He's switching, but not from 212. Of course, this guy cannot be 212 pounds here. He's too tall for that. He's a very tall bodybuilder. He's about as tall as Chris Bumstead. And right now, he's trying apparently to get a little bit bigger because he needs to compete in the open class against the big guys. And as you can see right here, he looks freaking huge. He's very big. I was wondering, is he gonna do classic again? Because he looks much bigger now. But I really like his physique. I really like what he's bringing. He's tall, he has narrow waist. His stomach is a little bit protruding, but only a little. His waist, structurally speaking, is narrow. He has very good shape, very good balance, very good proportions, very good back, very well developed back. And he's tall, about the same height as me, which makes him pretty classy. Classic physique guys should be a little bit taller. And it motivates me very much because I can imagine myself looking like this because I'm tall and I know how hard it is to put on muscle when you are over six foot one. And I'm six foot two, about that much, so it's hard to gain this kind of mass. And he did it, so I must believe that I can do it too. Anyways, guys, we're gonna see him in a three or four days at Lisbon, Portugal. He's gonna be competing as an open class bodybuilder, and it's gonna be exciting seeing him up there with the big guys. But I don't think he's gonna be a match for them, not just yet. He got bigger, but he's not that big. I think he needs to put on a lot more mass to be really competitive, to be like the top guy. He needs to put like maybe even 20 pounds of muscle. Anyways, we're gonna see what happens, but I'm really happy because of this, because open class is the bread and butter. Classic physique, very exciting, I love it, I'm gonna compete there, probably, but open division is the thing, you know, that's what has been around for a very long time and that's what all the champions in the history are from, you know, Arnold is from open, Dorian, of course, Ronnie, Jake Cutler, Phil Heath, that's open. Classic is just some new thing. Classic is great, it's interesting, it's exciting, it's refreshing, but it's not open. So I'm looking forward to seeing Henry Pierre Anno in the open division, but also Classic Physique has an update for you, and that's Kian Pearson, who is competing at the Mr. Olympia, and this is his most recent physique update. So he's posing for us right here, and you can see that he has made improvements. I can say so, pretty much his arms look bigger. Just when I thought his arms cannot be any bigger, they grew. And they are actually making his chest look even smaller than it is. And his chest needs to grow. So rather than focusing on his arms, he should focus on his chest and let his arms be for a little while because they are big enough. They are huge, especially for a classic physique guy. Maybe he is also gonna transfer to open eventually. That's what his sponsor, mentor and coach PJ Brown is saying, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, we're gonna see him at the Mr. Olympia in classic physique this year, and we're gonna see, is he gonna make some real damage? Can he win the Mr. Olympia or place in top three, top six, whatever? It's gonna be exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing him compared to Brion Ensley and Chris Bumstead and Arash Akbar and all these top guys. We never saw Kion compared to them, and Kion made a huge impact 
on a bodybuilding industry this year by bringing his much, much improved version at this New York Pro 2019. So I'm looking forward to Mr. Olympia, seeing him compared to the other guys. And whatever you guys think about Luke Sando competing at the Tampa Pro, tell me down below in the comment section. Tell me also what do you think about Henry Pierano competing at the Lisbon, Portugal and uh, transferring to Open Division. Anyways, guys, this is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it and also please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my content. I'm uploading videos every single day and whenever something happens, something important, I make a video about it immediately. All my followers already know that, but if you are new here, subscribe because you're gonna be happy with the service I provide. Anyways, guys, once again, thank you very much for watching. All the best. Bye-bye.